Okay. So we're looking at the same code here. We still have that game that we just reviewed last time. But what I did, I just added a few more lines of code here. Now before I explain it, let me show you what else it does now. So we still have 10 coins. We still enter a bet. So I bet 2 coins. Now this time, I get the prompt from user to call heads or tails. Okay. <clears throat> now last, the last of the times if I made the choice to say yes or no, we said we only checked to see if it was equal to yes or not equal to yes. Else, if it wasn't yes, it could have been no. So let's just say I follow heads or tails. Notice I have an H slash T, meaning that they can choose heads or tails. And, it's just, and then I say heads, it says you won. Okay. It says you have 12 coins. <clears throat> Do you want to bet again? So this time I got to call heads or tails. Let's say yes. Now I have 12 coins. Let's say I bet. Um, let's say I bet one coin. Let's say I call tails. Do you want to bet again? Mm, let's say yes. Okay, so I bet uh, one coin again. Call heads or tails. Let's say I enter another character called F. It says if you can't pick heads or tails, then I'll make the call. Then it says I lost. It doesn't. I didn't tell the. I didn't tell the computer what he picked. So you have 12 coins. Do you want to play again? Let's say I said, hey, no, say no. Press any key to continue here. Now, <clears throat> so I made a new variable called call in this time here. Now, as we start, you might have noticed here, as we start to uh, come up with these ideas and we start adding on to our program to make it better, I mean, if you watch Lesson 18, <clears throat> you'll see that we started off with just simple stuff here. Then I, I, we decided that we didn't like it. It wasn't really that exciting. We couldn't even see our coins. So we started adding code so we could display how many coins we have. And we started prompting the user to make more choices. So if you can, the, the, the player, the player who's going to buy this product is going to want more choices, more options here. So this time he has the options to call head or tails, and he can also make a bet. He can also decide if he wants to play again. But now things can get pretty crammed up real quick. So if we start to write a lot, a lot of code here, you know, it, it could become unmanageable where you won't be able to s trace every single code from scratch. But right here, I, s I noticed right in here, I added this whole new section. And it goes down. So we enter a bet, the player makes a bet. Now it says call heads or tails. Now this time I'm using the same choice character. It's either heads or tails. Now, if choice is equal to heads, I'm going to set the call to 1. Notice I have an else statement here. Else, and I have another loop. If choice is equal to t, the call is going to equal to 0. Now, so first it's going to check if it's heads. If it is heads here, it's going to skip this entire block of code right here. It's going to skip all that. But now, if it's not heads, then it's going to see if it's tails. If it's not heads, it could be tails. So now we've got to check if it's tails, because it can only check one thing at a time. Now, if it is tails, the call is going to equal zero. So if one equals heads, zero equals tails, for now. So, now, if it's not tails, that means, you know, we didn't call heads or tails, so I made it do this here. So we can have several different conditions here. Let me run this here. And uh, that's what I added here. And I also added some uh, see out statements well, saying you lost or you won. Let's say I put a new line here. Remember, this is a new line here, so it's going to it's going to make a new line. It's going to print you lost on a separate line. What else did I add here? And notice here, see this player equals choice here. I used to have braces here, but since I only have one program statement. I'm going to delete those, and it's going to check that one statement. Now this comes back to another thing. I just want to focus right now on this if-else statement here. See this else statement here? Well, the next thing is only the if piece here. 
and this else piece is an extension to the if because it's always going to be connected to it. So this whole piece does not need braces because the if statement is connected to it. This if statement is always pointing to the next block of code, so that's a connection. So we already see how this part runs here. Let's say I call tails here. Say about two. I call tails. Now it wasn't heads, so it went to tails. And this was true, so it calls here and it skips. Oh, and it'll only skip this section here. So the program executes the fastest when I call heads because it only has to check one call. If I call tails, it has to check two things. If I if I pick something else other than tails, let's say hit yes. Let's say I pick H or something, something that's not heads or tails. Oh, I I I, oh, I didn't. I did pick H out. All right. Two. Say I pick U. It says if then it says uh. Then it checks here, then it executes this else statement. If, you, if we pick something else other than heads or tails, it has to uh, go through three separate executions here. It has to check the heads, it has to check the tails, then it executes. I mean, we're still using the same amount of time if we pick tails, or a different program statement, because it's just going to execute the else, in other words. It's not heads or tails, it's going to execute this. But just to shorten this up here, we can have all kinds of embedded here. We can embed another if statement. We can make it shelled over and over, but it could be harder to read after a while. So what we can do here, see this, these braces here, these else braces? We're going to delete this here. And I want to delete this here. Now this else is always going to execute. Remember, if it's, the else doesn't have a block of code, <coughs> it's going to execute the next program statement, which is going to be this if statement here. It's not, notice it's not like a C out statement or anything, which is just one program statement. It's going to execute this if statement which is an entire block of code here and really we don't even need this brace here because it's just an if statement but this else is still part of the if it's it's an extension to the if if I didn't have that if here if I got rid of this uh, if piece here it wouldn't know what to do with this else here because it wouldn't know what to do with this else because it needs an if to go with it now when I have this if back, it's, it's automatically extending to this if here. So that else is going to be connected to the if, so it's all together. In fact, I can have all my code all on one line. So we can have an else if statement here, because that if goes with the with this call thing. So else and if. We can have this on one line here, but we can keep it like this just to keep things simple here. Else and then if. <coughs> it just have, the next program statement happens to be the is. Now a lot of people will put this on one line here. Else if. And you can think of it as a one program statement. That's how you can check multiple things. Other than just two pieces here. Like if we were going to roll a dice. Or roll a die. Um, <coughs> we would have embedded ifs to check if it's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. We could also use a switch statement, but we're not going to go over that yet. Let's just stick with some, just one thing at a time here. But <clears throat> so that that's what this is here. And we, if we run it again, it'll still work. Or should let's just check. You never know if it'll still work or not, even if it seems something that's really simple. You've lost one of it again. We lost two. Six. You. You won. So it's all right. It doesn't. It does. Now, the point of picking heads or tails, it doesn't matter what it picks. So you're still gonna have. You cannot increase your chances of winning by picking heads a certain amount of times or picking tails in a certain order. Or you can't. You can't increase your chances of winning. Winning money. Because this is perfectly even here, right? If I bet one coin every time, regardless whether I pick heads or tails, I'm expected to break even at the end. And I'll 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 go through this in a in a while loop next to explain this. I know I haven't been explaining arrays here, but this, since this came up here, so I'm going to go ahead and end this tutorial here, because I seem to be going. I'm trying to keep it at 10 minutes 
even though I'm going over 17 sometimes. I really do shoot for 10 minutes. Uh, so I'm going to stop here and I'm going <clears> to. <throat> I want to show you a. Uh, it's not really a tutorial, but I want to show you a betting strategy to uh, really increase your chances of winning. Because a, lo a lot of gamblers think, you know, if, if it's been head seven times in a row, I, sh I should pick tails next. It still doesn't matter what the past was. You're still going to have the same chance of winning. Just like in a lot in a the roulette wheel, they, if if they're if it lands on red for the past few times, they're going to bet on black. It doesn't matter what the past was. I mean, assuming a perfect wheel. But uh, the next tutorial, I want to show you a betting strategy. So it's and it, it's it's also pertaining to our code here. You know, this is kind of a review of everything that we learned here. Hopefully that uh, we're we're starting to build way too much. We're starting to have a lot wait a lot going on here. Sometimes I mean I remember I, I remember having two hundred lines of code in the main function or in the main function. Just you know the stuff here, but we're gonna go over a way to make this more manageable when we start learning functions here. And that'll be coming up soon. So we're just taking all our basic tools, the if from the first ten lessons, the if, the while, the else, and all our variable types, and we're applying these just to pretty much make whatever we want here. Now these aren't the games I'm going to, you know, this just happened to be a game, but when I start making the game tutorials, we're actually going to have pictures where the user can move this character around and shoot stuff or make a Mario type game where you can just jump on people and they they go away. But I want to show you something else that will involve our, uh, <clears throat> our, um, our code here, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I'm going to make another tutorial like right now.